Hi, welcome to Cooking with Orion. Today we're going to make bison sirloin with a rosemary and thyme rub, as well as some sautéed spinach and some Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. Now in our food processor we have two cloves of garlic, some fresh thyme, a tablespoon, and a tablespoon of fresh rosemary, some eyeballed sea salt, and a pinch of cayenne pepper. We're just going to run that and get it all mashed up together. And to that we're going to add, things alive, to that we're going to add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which we're also going to eyeball, in order to make a paste. So we're just going to put, it's about two tablespoons. So what we want to do is we want to create a nice paste of all of these nice flavors to rub on our steaks. Make sure it all gets nice and mixed together. Perfect. There you see our potatoes with a little bit of thyme boiling away. Alright, so it's rolling? Yeah. yeah. Hello, my name is Ian Chin, a.k.a. The Baking Chin, and I'm here in my friend Orion Field's kitchen, and uh, while he's making some bison steaks and some nice mashed potatoes, I'm going to make a very simple crisp. And I'm going to use pears today, but you can use any type of hard fruit. Just got to make sure it's hard. And then, uh, um, to this, you can use any pan, any casserole, but I'm, since my friend doesn't have a casserole, you can very much just use a frying pan, like so, and I've cut these already, and this is about, I'd say, five nice hard pears, and I've mixed that with a little bit of uh, lime juice, or citrus juice, and a little bit of sugar, about three tablespoons of sugar or so. And over here I have a mixture of equal parts, that's one cup and one cup of flour, and uh, brown sugar. And I'm going to put a pinch of salt, and I'm going to put a pinch of, well, two pinches, I'd say, of uh, five spice. And five spice is a lovely thing to have in your kitchen, because it's very, uh, it has cinnamon and star anise and ginger, and a lot of great things that work for both savory things and dessert things. And I've just added a stick of butter, and now, as with a good pastry crust, I'm going to just massage these two together with my fingers. It's not too, too hard to do. Just do it quickly and use the tips of your fingers because they are less, they are less hot. And though you need hot fingers for other things, hot fingers are lovely on other occasions, they are not lovely for making pastry. I would say. And use hot fingers for other things, like building models. Yeah, I know all about that. Oh yes! Orion, he tells me, is a quite the model builder. Lots of aircraft. Lots of aircraft. But that's another video. That would be another video. I mean, I, I guess, I guess you, I reckon you could put some, some model airplanes if you wanted in this video, but it's very much up to you, I guess. I'm just trying to make this look like coarse bread crumbs, because that's the consistency. And this is, I think, this is just about a foolproof recipe. And you don't even have to use your fingers, you can use a pastry cutter, or you could even use a food processor. It's very much up to... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, our food processor is full of rosemary, thyme, and garlic right now. I don't, I don't think that would be too bad, but... I think it would overpower the pears. I think so too. And this is just about ready. I'm going to put a little more because I like the flavor. If you're making gingerbread, this is lovely to have on your own. It also has fennel in it. Mm. And you get all those lovely licorice -y tastes with some warm cinnamon and ginger. 
think that's just fantastic. And now this is very much like coarse bread crumbs, as you mm -hmm. can see. I'm just going to even this out just a little bit. And now we just put it on top. Comsa. I actually like a lot of filling, but feel free to half this recipe if you don't like if you don't like the topping as much. And now I'll just put this in a 340 degree, 350 degree oven, or that's about 160 degrees C, and uh, put that in for about 40 minutes, and we shall have a nice crisp. All right. While well, the pan is heating up, that we're going to grill our steaks on, we're going to put our rosemary, thyme, and garlic mixture on our steaks. So we're just going to take a little bit and spread it all on there and get some of that flavor in there. And we're probably going to have to make more of it because we have a lot more steaks than we probably should have for the amount of seasoning we have. But that's not a problem. We have plenty of garlic and rosemary and olive oil left to make more. Alright, now we're ready to put these on. As you can see, I put the garlic and thyme on one side of it. And I can put it on the other side once it's on here. And these should should not take that long to cook. And it's probably going to set off the smoke detector. So if somebody could open the window, all of them, that would be awesome. That's quite a hint. I'm going to turn the heat down too. Even though the recipe says to cook on very high heat, it's probably not a great idea. I also have my vent fan on at high, but that might not help. Maybe even turn the spray booth on, Tony. Cut. Yeah. So, I have mashed these mashed potatoes up until they're just chunky. And you can do this as, uh, you can do this as chunky as you like. Now I'm going to add a little milk. You could use cream, and that'll help loosen it up just a little bit. So to add to the luscious creaminess of all of this, and also I think I shall need a little pepper. I think a little pepper always adds something. A little soup salt. Excuse me, Ian. Can I have some of your salt, please? I don't know, Orion Field. I don't know. Just let me put a little bit in sure. the mashed potatoes. I'll say that is enough. That's that's about a two. That's about a teaspoon, and just mixing this up very well. And also, I'm going to add a couple knobs of butter. One of my butters fell on the floor, so I should I should take that off. I don't want anyone slipping. And I'll put a little more butter in. The butter's also very much to your taste. And since the potatoes are very hot right now, they'll receive the butter very well. And I think this is a little thick, so I'm going to add a little more milk. And mix it all together. A little more milk. And I think those are very nice potatoes. Now, I think I'll just try a little bit to see if they're good. With a very clean spoon. Um, Hmm. Very good. I could use a little more salt, but those are very good mashed potatoes. All right, back to you, Mr. Field. Well, I only had enough of the uh, rosemary and, and garlic mixture for three of the steaks. So what I've been doing with the other ones is I've been doing a mixture of some ground, freshly ground Himalayan salt and some freshly ground cumin to flavor them. So we're going to have two slightly different flavors. A nice herby flavor and a nice cumin-y flavor. Count me in for the cumin. Well, cumin is my signature ingredient. I use it in just about everything I cook. And right now you can really smell the cumin roasting on these steaks. I think it's very nice roasted. I, I actually have roasted cumin as well. That's nice. So we just took these out of the oven. They've been braising, well not braising, they've been broiling in there a little bit along with our tart. Crisp. Crisp, sorry crisp Ian. Mr. Field. 
Uh, so we're just letting them sit a little bit, let them reabsorb their juices, and we're going to serve them shortly. And I'm making a sauce. And they're all cooked medium rare. And, yes, Ian is making a sauce from the drippings from the bison. What I did was, um, this was the pan we, uh, we seared it on, so I took, I uh, deglazed it with a little stock. You could use wine or you could use bowl, and I reduced it until it was a little syrupy, and I put some cornstarch and water slurry in it, and then afterwards salt and pepper and just a knob of butter to finish it off, and you have a very nice semi-thick sauce. It's going to go great over the mashed potatoes. I think so. Well, I'll give it a bit of a taste. So. Mm. That's, that's very good. Awesome.